name is Costel, and you're watching Storming Interview. He's a teacher, he's an actor, he's a comedian, he's a DJ. Today we're interviewing Tom Wilcox. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. Did I miss any other title? Uh, I don't think so. What, what, what? No, I don't no? think so. Okay, uh, let's start uh, with you as a teacher. What made you want to be a teacher? Um, I don't really know. Uh, my my mom and dad are both teachers, um, so it's kind of. But and because of that, I kind of always told myself I wasn't going to be a teacher because you know I didn't want to just follow what my parents did. Uh, they're both English teachers too. Um, but then uh, after my studies, uh, I started working with language, doing translation and things like that. And then one day, uh, an opportunity came along to be an English teacher at Hansa Hochschule, and that's a really nice job. And I thought, well. I'll take. I'll try it out. I'll see what it's like, and go for it. So Why exactly English? Uh, well, I'm, I am English, and uh, but I grew up in in Holland, so I grew up with with uh, both languages, um, and so I've been kind of using that like as a kind of lucky uh, skill that, that I happen to just be given by having grown up here. Uh, so I've used that, you know, in 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 jobs and work and things. I've I've done voiceover acting for in English for Dutch educational things. Uh, and as I said, I'm a translator as well, and so it kind of made sense to just keep going with my language skill, I guess. I heard uh, teachers get free coffee. How many do you drink a day? <laughs> I don't drink coffee. Oh, not uh, at all. No, I don't. Uh, and being English, I do drink a lot of tea, but I don't like the kind of tea that you can get for free in, in Holland, because you need to have fresh milk with it. You have to have fresh milk if you're English and you drink tea. So I can't make use of the free um, facilities here, unfortunately. Okay. Other than the cup of soup, of course. Uh, what's the last thing you do before you go to work? The last thing I do before I go to work? Uh, brush my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just get up and eat breakfast, brush my teeth. Well, get dressed, obviously. Okay. And stuff. And then the last thing I do is quickly and then rush out and try not to be late. Pretty much. Uh, Ilka Soke, a fourth year student, uh, asks, wants to know, what do you dislike about teaching? What do I dislike about teaching? Um, I don't like I Monday mornings. Uh, Monday morning, 8.30 is always a bit of a challenge. Um, but sick of teaching? No, no. I, it's, 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 uh, I mean, I didn't know what to expect, so as I said, you know, when I started off. But I thought, okay, this is a challenge, I'll, I'll go for it. And um, it's... Uh, it surprised me how much fun it actually is to do. Um, what I don't like so much, I guess maybe if I have to teach the same class over and over and over and over and over, uh, like right now I teach ECP1 six times a week, uh, which is on the one hand very nice and convenient, and means I can get it better and better each time, but uh, by the sixth one I really, like my brain starts going, you've said this before, what are you doing? And it gets really confusing, and, and yeah, so that can be a bit heavy. <laughs> But reading dozen of papers at the end of the, of the block, what does this feel like? That's quite a thing, yeah. Uh, especially when you have a big pile of them on your table, like that high <laughs> of one class, one course, and then it's just like another one and another one and another one. But it can be really interesting on the other hand because it's, you know, I'm often really curious to see what people have wrote. Because I'm, 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 what people have written, sorry. Um, <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I guess I'm lucky enough to have to grade the kind of stuff which is creative. You're writing. It's not an exam, a multiple choice exam, but it's creative writing in some way, some form of another. So it's interesting to see what comes out of it. But you're right, it can be really um, a lot of work. Yeah. And at first you think, oh, it's fine, I'll do it in a couple of days, and then no, it takes weeks <laughs> to get it. Ever got a prank, ever got a prank um, uh, paper? Not a full-on prank paper, no. I've had funny stuff in there. Oh, right. Uh, I can't remember now off the top of my head, but, you know, like funny kind of... Um, um, introductions to it, like uh, acknowledgments saying I want to thank, um, what was it? I want to thank Microsoft for creating the software that let me write the paper and, and stuff like that, you know, like really like kind of obviously making fun of the whole acknowledgement thing because there's no one to acknowledge except himself. <laughs> what do you like about your students? That's a question also from a student. Hmm. Um, I like how um, Doing an international study, um, teaching in an international study means that you get this huge variety of different kinds of people from different backgrounds and different stories and different ages and different interests. And, and um, for that reason, I really like uh, I really like being an AC because it means I get to find out a bit more about that. 
And I'm just, yeah, I'm just kind of amazed at how different these people's uh, stories are, really. And, and I think it's really cool to see then how everyone just comes together in a class, in a group, and, and works together. Uh, is there anything you want to do in class, but the title of the teacher doesn't let you? I want to do in class, but the title of the teacher doesn't let me. Um, you mean like English teacher? Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, there's not, not, nothing I would want to do in class for these classes because it, it wouldn't make sense to do some of the other things. But uh, I did uh, at, at university, I did American studies. Uh, so sometimes I find myself wanting to talk about like something to do with American culture or American history or whatever just because it somehow came up. And then I do, and then I realize, wait a minute, this isn't what this class is about at all. So then that's kind of maybe. But you know, I don't wish that I could plan that in or something. It would be nice to teach American history, but I don't think there's a place for that here at uh, uh, IC right now. <laughs> Do teachers get procrastination? And what's your worst case? Do I pro procrastinate yeah. myself? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm a horrible procrastinator. What's your worst I've case? always been a horrible procrastinator. Uh, looking at a big pile of papers that I have to grade and thinking, yeah, yeah, I have to do that today, but first I will do this, and then I will do this, and oh, wow, yeah, I'm actually at home today, so I should probably take care of all this stuff in the house, which I haven't done, uh, because, and then I'll do the work afterwards. So. I just, I procrastinate with it. Did you ever get punished for not meeting a deadline? Uh, not, not while being a teacher, no. I always, I always make the deadline for, uh, for That's the a days. cookie to the jar. <laughs> uh, what is at uh, some point, uh, no, uh, so you're working with Joyce in the same office, right? Yeah, yeah. And she's your mother-in-law. She is my mother-in-law, yeah. Was it uh, awkward at some point? No, I thought it would be, but it wasn't at all. Um, obviously when we first, when I first started working here, she wasn't my mother-in-law, but she was still my uh, long-time girlfriend's mother, so I knew her very well. Um, but I don't know; it's just it's different at work. Like we don't, I don't see her as my mother-in-law, and she's different, and I'm different from, you know, I know that some family dinner or whatever. It's just, yeah, it's. I thought it would be weird, but um, it's actually fine. If I was to take uh, to become a teacher tomorrow, what tips would you give me? Ooh. Um, what tips would I give you? Name three of them. Oh, I don't know. Um, wow, this is difficult. I have to think about that. Can I come back to you on those? Oh, no, okay. wait, I won't be able to because I'll be thinking about the other answers. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> <laughs> um, be prepared, but don't be too prepared, I think. is at least. But again, this doesn't apply to everybody. Like It's just what works for me. Um, obviously, going in there with nothing planned at all means you're going to end up with a horrible class. But um, Planning like you know, like I'm going to spend 10 minutes exactly on this, and by that point I need to move on to that, and this is exactly what I'm going to say, and this is exactly what I'm going to do. That doesn't work for me at all. Like uh, I want to have you know three or four main things I'm going to do, and then just see what happens and, and adjust according to what the mood is like and what the what works and what doesn't work. You know. uh, that's definitely my main tip for myself. <laughs> I guess. Do you sing in the shower? Do I sing in the shower? No, I don't sing. In the shower. Do you act in the shower? No. Oh. When I did you <laughs> discover yourself? Uh, when did you discover your passion towards acting? Well, um, my dad has been a, like an amateur actor for a very long time, as long as I've been around anyway. Um, and he always dragged me and my brother along to plays, to be in plays, to be like the little kid parts that didn't do anything and just had to sit there wearing a frog suit or something. Um, but then. Uh, yeah, I was always kind of in them, but then always way too embarrassed to do anything with it, so I just kind of really, really not be good, because I was like an awkward teenager going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But then, at uh, one point, when I'd become a student, uh, I watched my dad in a play uh, where he ha he played, he was playing a, an old Shakespearean actor who had to like suddenly do this big Shakespeare bit, and I was just like, whoa, that's amazing, because he did it really, really, really well. And I was like, yeah, I want to actually, I want to do it again, but I want to this time actually do it, like you have to go for it, take it seriously. So then I joined the... Um, students acting club okay. and kind of started doing things from there. What was your first serious character then? After I became a student, my first character was um, Adam in a play called The Shape of Things. Uh, he played, he's a, a huge geek who gets kind of manipulated by this, by this uh, girl who, as an art project, sees, tries to see if she can turn the geek into a popular guy. And he thinks that she's doing it because she likes him and it turns out that he was just an art project. And it's all very painful and sad. And I got cast because they thought I would play a convincing geek, <laughs> for some reason. I don't know why. Being, being a member of Stranger Things uh, have happened. How does it feel then? Oh, it's really fun. It's re yeah, really, really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um... Because it's improv improvised acting, 
and it's comedy, that means every time we ever do anything, it's different and it's always going to be funny, so it's always entertaining, whatever we do, for no. us, I mean. Okay, North, North is one of the of uh, the big projects of, of this organization, right? What, what can you tell us in exclusiveness? North uh, is a project that uh, one of my fellow Stranger Things actors came up with. He was writing a, uh, he just writes a lot and he wrote a kind of movie slash TV script uh, about international students in Groningen. Um, and then someone else went, you know what, well we should just try and film it and we were like, yeah, okay, cool, that'll be fun and it'll probably look horrible but it's just fun to play around and do things and then it just kind of grew and we found loads and loads and loads of people uh, in the small but really, really great little community that is honing it, who were really good at what they did, but also just willing to just do it for, for no money, just for fun, and to uh, together to kind of set up this project. So we ended up working with loads of people who were amazing with filmmaking, cameras, they had all this equipment that they built themselves, and then other people came in, and loads of people who waited around for days and days to just be in the movie, like, as an extra, and just, we had so much kind of support from that that we were able to make this, this, uh, this project, which yeah, is I'm pretty proud of. It's like it's obviously it's still amateur. We made it ourselves as amateurs, so it's lots of flaws in there. But considering what it is and the, the tiny budget we made it with, I think it was really really cool. Yeah. Who are you playing there? Uh, there I'm playing another geek. Uh, I don't know why. It's always geeks. Uh, called Simon, and he's basically uh, a guy who uh, we don't really know where he's from. He's probably from England because I just play him like myself. Um, he's studying in Groningen, and him. He, in order to try and impress a girl, he gets himself in too deep with the local Irish slash Scottish uh, mafia boss, who, whose office is in the Irish pub, and uh, yeah, stupid things happen, basically. <laughs> what do you do when you forget your line? In a play, if you forget your line, you improvise uh, in a way to get back to the script uh, and try and make it look like nothing happened. Uh, with improvising, of course, you never have lines, so the whole show is us forgetting our lines. Basically. Okay, but then where do you get your inspiration for, for improvising? I don't know. Uh, it comes from the scene. This sounds really, 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 really um, cliche, maybe, but with improv, uh, you need to let... Um, you, the whole point is you need to let everything go and let what's happening around you create something. So if you have two people and you put in a scenario, uh, like right now you and I are talking, if you say something to me, I don't know what you're going to say to me, so I improvise an answer, right? This is what we do in real life all the time. And basically, improv on stage is exactly the same. Uh, you're just there with another actor, and you don't know what they're going to do. They'll say something, you have a character in your head, you react the way that character would react, and because you react that way, the next person reacts to you, and something is created. So, it's kind of the inspiration is the story which unfolds. You're a comedian. Tell us a joke. <laughs> That's not how that works, unfortunately. Uh, especially because I'm not really a comedian, I'm an improv comedian. I'm an improv actor. Improvise a joke. Um, well, again, it would be based on a, re on a reaction, right? So, what we, that's the thing, like, I mean, uh, it looks, seems like I'm trying to avoid the question, but um, good improv acting doesn't involve telling jokes, and we try not to tell jokes at all. It's, it's interesting and funny situations that, again, kind of develop out of what's going on in the scene, rather than, hey, I have an idea, let's set up this thing, and here's a punchline, you know, like the punchlines kind of happen by themselves because the situation made that happen. You know? So uh, I know I'm trying to avoid the question here, but I, I actually can't tell you a joke because I don't know good jokes. So. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, do you consider yourself the funny guy among your colleagues? Um, I mean, work, yeah, at Hansa. I don't know, no, not really. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I don't. It's a whole different environment, you know. Like I don't sit there being like, "Hey guys, I'm the, I do comedy for uh, for a hobby, so I'm going to be funny now." Like that would that would probably make me a very annoying person. Kind of <laughs> so uh, I don't think I am. No, I think, uh, uh, you'd have to ask the others. Maybe they would think so. Uh, were you ever booed on stage? Um, not booed. We've had hecklers, loads of hecklers. You know, like people who get in there and like um, try and disrupt the show. Uh, especially in the show we do in the Irish pub because when we started in the Irish pub nobody knew about us obviously uh, and there was like on a Monday night there were four guys who would always be there at the bar and that was it there was no one else in the pub it was a dead night there was these four guys who were just kind of regulars there and they didn't like how we came in and went like hey we're going to do something funny tonight and they'd be like oh go away and so they would just kind of turn their backs on us and be annoying and stuff and, but in the end that grew and they kind of disappeared because they realized okay this isn't my pub night anymore um, but we have like 
for example, on occasion had like a guy who was just incredibly drunk, like really drunk, and you know the whole pub is sitting there annoyed by this guy because he keeps on going like, yeah, yeah, this is not funny. You call that funny? All the time, you know. And then we're just like, okay, <laughs> that's great, and we kind of try and react with the guy. And in the end, we had him kicked out because he was just ruining the show for everyone because everyone else was going, come on, shut up, shut up, you know. And so we've had that kind of situation, but never like actual. Boo. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Do you expect any? No, well we have games where people have to guess stuff and then we tell people if the if they're not in the right in the right direction, if they're not getting not guessing right, then they have to go boo to tell them that this is wrong. So yeah, we tell people to boo us. <laughs> Sasha Jung Thomas, uh, another second year student, uh, wants to know how did you get into drum and bass and how did you get started as a DJ in general? Uh, well how I got into drum and bass I just kind of started liking the music, uh, like, I don't know, 10, 11 years ago or something, when I kind of discovered what it was and just kind of vaguely listened to it a little bit. And then, like, about four years ago, uh, I had a job um, in a translation company where, I, like, it was an office job, like, 9 to 5. Uh, and in between, when I didn't have anything to do, I just, like, listened to podcasts and stuff. And I kind of suddenly got way back into uh, drum and bass and really thought, like, oh, it'd be really cool to, to do that as a DJ. Um, and then so I like I spent some money, a little bit of money on some secondhand turntables and a mixer, and just kind of started collecting stuff and teaching myself how to mix. And then this place, the cast. Uh, this is before I worked at Hansa, so I didn't know about the cast or I didn't know anything about Hansa. But I heard that the cast was having a student DJ competition, which they still do. Um, and I was still officially a student at the time uh, at the Rug, and so it was open for me and any other student. So I sent in a demo. Uh, and I got asked to be in the in the semi-finals uh, for that and so I played my set um, and I got the audience appreciation prize so I meant I got to go to the finals and I ended up coming uh, second place in the finals so that was like my first ever time that I actually played outside of the house in a club uh, so the only way I managed to do that was signing up for a competition but still I got to play in, in Simplon uh, and discover what's that like what that's like and pretty much since then I started getting gigs and, Moving on from there. So the cast gave me my start as a DJ, basically. Um, so also, Sasha wants to ask you, uh, how did you manage to become the resident DJ at Subsonic? Uh, well, I'm not the resident DJ at Subsonic, but I'm the resident DJ of Submerge, the drum and bass event at Subsonic. Uh, and I managed to become the resident DJ for Submerge by starting the event Submerge. It's my thing. I came up with it myself uh, with a friend. Uh, a friend of yeah, I went to this friend who was like all into kind of organizing things, and he was kind of he was my manager as a DJ as well, like unofficially but still. Uh, and I said, you know what would be cool? We should just set up our own drum and bass party because there's two big drum and bass parties which are really really awesome, but they're really big and they have big names that come in. Uh, they cost ten euros to get in at least, you know, and it's kind of a big thing. And there's no smaller party that's like slightly more kind of easy to go to if you don't know drum and bass. You can just go in and check it out. Uh, and also for smaller DJs who need to get a place to start playing, to so just come and play. So we should set one up. So we did. Uh, and he said, well, yeah, obviously you will play there. I was like, yeah, of course. That would, I'm not going to set up a party and not play there myself. But I won't play every time. And he said, yeah, no, you should play every time. It's cool to have a resident. You should be the resident. So I was like, nice. I <laughs> have a, a, a show every month at least. So it's fun. And I, it's really great because I get to book, book new DJs and, and, and you know, give people kind of a platform to start with and we've also started booking like professional international DJs. Too. Interesting background of, of a teacher, of an English teacher. Well, how would you prefer to be presented then? As a teacher or as a DJ? Maybe as an actor or maybe as, as a, a merge of those? What, if I was DJ? Yeah. Then as a DJ. Okay. So no, you're, you're a separate person when you're uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, at, at your... Bold? How do you call that? At the, at the mixing desk. Mixing, mixing desk, okay, <laughs> mixing desk. We have another question from a student who is a second year student named uh, Ty Streetford. Uh, do you use your hobby as a DJ to relieve stress before or after school? No. Um, as in, well, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's really great, kind of on a broader sense, to have fun things to do outside of work. It's important to have a work life balance thing going on. You know? So, I, I, in that sense, yeah, I'm really happy that, you know, on one hand, I'm, got a great job that I really like, but I also have loads of other things to look forward to outside of that, like I've got a party coming up to play, or a show with Stranger Things, or whatever. Um, but relieving stress, I don't know, it's um, it's more like, for example, if I have a submerge on a Saturday night from 11 till 6, uh, which obviously I, I'm there for the whole time because I run the party, 
uh, and I go to play, you know, and then so I don't sleep very much, and then it's Sunday, and then Monday morning at 8.30 I go to teach again. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the opposite of relieving stress, it's more like making me tired before going to work. <laughs> but uh, that's all completely worth it for me, so. Okay. Now we're getting to the section of quick questions, where you have to respond really fast. Uh, the question won't go too fast, so don't, don't worry about that. But let's start with, uh, name one weird thing about yourself. A weird thing about myself? Yeah. Oh. Uh, weird. <laughs> uh, I, uh, um, I have two cats, and um, sometimes I will talk to the cat, and then I'll also talk as the cat back. <laughs> That's pretty sad, I think. But, and I find myself doing it, I'm like, oh, stop giving the cat a voice, this is really bad. This generates another question. How many cats do you have? Two. Two. Yeah. How many photos of those cats do you have? Loads. <laughs> How many of them do you share on Facebook? Some. Not too many, but some. <laughs> oh, that's a cookie to the job. Yeah. <laughs> what, is, uh, what was your most embarrassing moment in your life uh, as a teacher? My most embarrassing moment as a teacher? Yeah. Ooh. Um, I don't know. I probably buried it somewhere <laughs> in my subconscious so that I've forgotten about it. And then it will come back and haunt me in a nightmare. So there know. is something. I don't know. If there is, I've forgotten it now. Sasha has another question. What do you like most? Being a DJ, being a comedy uh, interp uh, improv improviser, or acting, or teaching? It's mm, difficult. <laughs> uh, I've, I've thought about this, because people have asked me this before. Uh, and it's really hard to say. As in, like, for example, like, which one would you want to keep doing for, like, as a full-time job or something? Uh, then I really don't know. I mean, I love DJing, uh, but there's something amazing about getting uh, about the, the, the buzz that you get off of doing a good improv show and, you know, it's fantastic. It's really, I, I don't know, I want to do them all. <laughs> okay, but if you have a specific time slot and you have to choose, you have three invitations or four invitations, you have a lecture, you have an invitation to play in a uh, play. Well, if I have a lecture, I do lectures, it's my job, so I can't So you don't have a lecture, you have okay, those so three. If you leave teaching out of it, because obviously teaching is my job and it's got priority in that respect, so I'll do it. Um, it depends on what, basically we get loads of Stranger Things shows, um, much more than I get with DJing, and there's nine of us in the group of Stranger Things, so they don't need me for every show, so if I got a DJ gig, especially a good DJ gig, I'll go for that and say, I'm sorry, I can't make it to the Stranger Things show, I have a DJ gig, because I know the Stranger Things show will still happen without me, and I, you know, I'm still building up <coughs> DJ stuff, uh, DJ shows, so I would take every opportunity, unless it's a really one, but yeah. <laughs> Another question for Sasha. What was your nickname during high school? During high school? I didn't have one. <laughs> during teen, uh, uh, before high school? Before, no, I don't think I ever had one. No, I just talked. <laughs> uh, one friend of mine called me Twilcox. I don't know why. No, no uh, idea. Because I once wrote down, I don't know, like way back in the beginning internet days where you had to write usernames for everything. I once wrote like, T. Wilcox as my <laughs> username and then you kept on calling me that. But that's just one guy. So that's not really a nickname, I guess. So, no, I never, never had a nickname. Okay, so now the last question of the interview. What's the question you would never ask on camera? Uh, answer on camera. A question I would never answer on camera? Yeah. Wow. That's really difficult. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> something, something really personal, I guess. Uh, I can't think of a specific question. <laughs> Try me. <laughs> I'll ask a really bad question. I'll tell you if I'll answer it. <laughs> no, we'll leave, we'll leave it for the next okay. time. We'll leave it for the next time. Tom, thank you for your time. Thank you. It was a pleasure for having you. It was Konstantin Kolak with you. Thank you for watching. Have a nice week.